a stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some rays like Simba or crack like the Beast Dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home Such a bizarre movie. It's neither here nor there, but this copy of Brave Little Toaster it was still in its original shrink wrap, and the sticker on the side wasn't broken either. I'm the first person to ever watch this VHS copy. Let's press play. Brave Little Toaster starts with an ad for the Brave Little Toaster. No, it's the Brave Little Toaster goes to Mars. Then a live action Jungle Book, Mowgli's Story. I've never heard of that. Kiki's Delivery Service. This is like the Disney B movie ads reel. Kirsten Dunst is Kiki. Perfect. Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Not gonna hate on that movie. Print your presentation, the brave little toaster in a font that looks like it's from the 1950s. Okay, we start with the dilapidated house on this hill. This is how horror movies start. I already love the realistic animation as the shot tracks through the house. There's a radio, it starts playing, and then the lamp comes to life, and he tries to fight the radio. Holy mother of Edison, you could have broken my bulb. That's a good line. Vacuum cleaner comes to life. We meet the toaster. All the appliances are alive and running around the house. The lamp has a weird voice. It's like the voice actor is trying to be someone else but can't pull it off. I think there's an electric blanket they call the toaster slots. All these things do is clean the house. And to keep them motivated, the radio plays tutti frutti and we are in TGIF's full house territory. Montage of the house cleaning as the entire song plays. I'll never get used to non-Disney hits in Disney movies. This feels like when they used all the Elvis music in Lilo and Stitch. The blanket stops and whispers, car. And I think the vacuum is voiced by the guy that did Tony the Tiger and had a brief stint at WCW hosting the Nitro parties. They rush to the window and they see a car coming. I think we dip into a flashback or like a fantasy where the master is home. Master is some goofy kid with glasses. He comes running inside yelling, Blanky, it's a sweet moment. But then the fantasy fades cold as the car drives by. Everyone is sad. Blanket starts crying. The oblivious lamp goes... So was it the master? That's really funny. Vacuum gets mad and tries sucking up the picture of the master and everyone is screaming. The picture breaks. The air conditioner comes to life and starts laughing at the mall and he's all condescending. The vacuum gets mad and the meat air conditioning unit says, are you going to suck me to death? Uh, these voices sound familiar. I'll Google this after. The AC is a paranoid conspiracy theorist and this is great watching this in 2020 because he's an absolute lunatic that starts screaming and ends up frying himself. Like he sparks and short circuits. He's so angry. He's dead and the rest of the appliances kind of shrug and agree he was a jerk. Tough crowd. They hear another car. They all go into appliance mode, like Toy Story. A first of many Toy Story comparisons. Oh, it's a real estate agent. He pounds a for sale sign into the ground. It's over. Toaster says, we have to somehow go to the city and find the family who used to live here. The radio says, they wouldn't have this problem if they were wiener dogs. What? Okay, there's a radio report where a dog was left behind, but because it's a dog, it left and found its owners. Okay, Toaster rallies the troops, and they agree to go to the city to find the family. There's a montage of them trying to figure out uh, the proper mode of transportation from a mattress to a pogo stick to the fridge, and the instrumental soundtrack is perplexingly like that schoolyard, probably offensive by today's standards. do 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 That song, that's what they're... Plane. I don't know why. Uh, they choose to use a rolling stool and take a breath before they leave the house. The vacuum is going to pull the rolling chair with a bunch of appliances on it. They've never been outside. The vacuum goes over the grass and says, wow, shag carpet. The lamp wants to know where the sun's on off button is. I mean, that's, those are kind of fun. The toaster sings a song. There's something kind of fun about the complete lunacy of this movie. Uh, you know that viral video of the trucker with a Buzz and Woody on the back of his truck hanging there? Revealing that iconic Toy Story moment. Why doesn't anyone recreate this scene somewhere in the middle of the woods? They continue through the woods until they reach a clearing and then they decide to sleep. They all bicker. I looked up their names. Are you ready? <clears throat> Get a pen because this is intense. Toaster, Lampy, Blanky, Radio. And any guesses? Toaster, Lampy, Blanky, Radio, and Kirby. Mm-hmm. They wake up and they hear something that's light and they wander out into a beautiful flowery field. There's frogs and dragonflies and beavers and turtles. They frolic to some like dramatic symphony music which doesn't really match the visuals they 
Then they leave. The radio and the vacuum want to fight and Buzzkill Toaster breaks it up. They use Blanky as a tent. That's pretty inventive. They all have dreams or flashbacks about the Goofy Master using them and oh wow, the toaster is burning toast and the black smoke turns into a, a monster and drags the master outside and this terrifying firefighting clown comes and sprays forks at the toaster before he plugs him into electrical socket and dangles him over top of a bathtub and then he falls in and electrocutes himself. What the f Toaster snaps awake in the tent and there's a storm and a flood and they bail and they all panic and Lampy gets hit by lightning and explodes and he's dead, fade to black. What is happening? It's morning and okay, Lampy's busted, but he's alive. Blanky is missing, but they hear him stuck in a tree. The vacuum uses his retractable cord like a grappling hook and gets up into the tree and saves him. Kirby is a hero and they're on their way. But then Kirby rolls over his own cord and he's choking on it. I do not understand the tone of this movie. Some of these scenes are absolutely horrific in every single way. I'm a grown man and this is making me really anxious and uncomfortable. Kirby passes out from choking on his cord, but he wakes up and angrily tells everyone off. Okay, they have to cross over a giant cliff and they make a chain to do it. Lampy says, hey, we're not dead. And I'm not sure if that was supposed to be funny or like a victory cry. But then they all fall into the water after all. And the vacuum saves them all again. The vacuum cleaner saves them all again. Brave little toaster. Why isn't this called the brave vacuum? Lampy says, I really thought I turned in my warranty that time. That's Again, pretty funny. They all sink into the mud, all of them, under the surface. Blop, gone. Just as the radio antenna is about to sink out of view, some weird dude in the forest pulls them all out of the mud and tosses them into the back of his truck and drives away. They're saved. No, they're not. He owns a parts store and he's going to dismantle them and sell them as parts. They meet a hanging light that sounds like the Taco Bell Chihuahua and he's creeping me out. Then they meet a blender and then the rest silently watches the store owner traps the blender in a vice, tears him open, pulls out his motor and sells it. Again, terrifying. All the other half taken apart machines in the shop are all like sing a song and there's a female reel to reel player who has two reels as her chest and I don't know why I kind of took issue with that in like a, hey, this is a kid's movie kind of way, but I did. The human comes back for the radio, but the other main appliances stack up and act possessed and the store owner screams and runs headfirst into a wall and knocks himself out. The appliances bust out and speed down the road in a baby carriage. We finally meet the kid from the house and he's grown up now and the first thing he says is that he's heading back to the cab to pick up the old toaster and radio and other stuff to take to his dorm because he's going away to college. Mwah, mwah, mwah. After he leaves though, the other appliances in his adult house, like his new appliances, are all because he's going back to take his old stuff from the cabin to his dorm instead of them. This is like a never-ending spiral. The old appliances arrive at the kid's new house and knock on the door. A new lamp answers the door and then slams the door in their face. Then he reopens the door and the uh, new appliances let the old appliances in. It's an appliance showdown. That sounds like something on the old Price is Right. There's an old computer and a grumpy two-headed sewing machine and they reunite with an old TV. How are you doing? Well, I got a few seasons left in me. That's good stuff. Finally, a movie that mixes a goofy premise with horrific reminders of death and mortality and the odd clever one-liner. The boy shows up at the old cottage and thinks someone trashed the place, and I mean, I guess someone did. The possessed appliances and is seen straight out of Poltergeist. Back at the new house, the new appliances look like they're gonna murder the old appliances, but instead, they break into a techno song about how advanced they are, which is hilarious. Now, 23 years later, a rotary dial phone and an old desktop computer, a new vacuum, a toaster oven, the future, the future. A sad moment where they cut back and forth between the kid and the cottage going, where's the radio? The jump cut to the, his new house, just as the new appliance just toss the radio out the window into the garbage bin below. Repeat for the rest of them. That was really good in a sad way. Garbage truck comes and takes them away. At the cabin, the human boy repairs the AC unit and the AC unit comes back to life and he sees the master and he starts crying. Aww. The rest of the appliances are off to the dump. In the dump, we meet a terrifying new character. It's the giant magnet who lifts the junk and drops it onto a conveyor belt that takes them to the junk crusher. This is the ending of Toy Story 3. 100%. A bunch of cars start singing as they get fed into the junk crusher and they come out the other side as one of those like condensed squares. I'm getting, again, legit anxiety as these cars get put on the conveyor belt and the crushing mechanism just gets closer and closer. None of them escape. None. They just keep singing like Titanic. Back at the house, the TV makes its own commercial for the junkyard and pretends it's an emporium. So the guy's like, oh, an emporium. I'll just go there and buy the things I'm missing. And that's some good writing. Uh, when the movie isn't spinning its wheels, it's a really good script. Like the end of Toy Story 3, they're next to be crunched just as the boy shows up. He finds the busted picture of himself in the middle of an abandoned junkyard, and that is the stuff nightmares are made of. The appliances keep trying to make him notice them without showing them that they're actually possessed. 
chest, but the giant magnet is still after them, and I am into this movie. The boy just happens to be standing by the conveyor belt as his stuff goes by. The boy grabs it, but the giant magnet demands blood and sucks everything, including the human boy up, drops him on the conveyor belt, sends him towards the crusher. Only the toaster remains, and he needs to do something. This is suspenseful. Time for the big, the big save. The toaster leaps, and... Oh. My. God, he tosses himself into the gears of the giant machine and it chews and mangles him up, but he jams the machine and it stops and it saves his friends. The next scene, the boy's trying to repair the toaster and they're driving to the cottage with him. The end. As soon as the credits start, an announcer talks over the music and says, stay tuned for another Brave Little Toaster adventure. Never before have I seen that. Someone talking over the credits. Then we get a preview for the Brave Little Toaster 2. Don't think I have that one in the bin. The Brave Little Toaster to the rescue, coming to VHS in 1999. Own all three. There's three of these movies? You're telling me there's a Brave Little Toaster trilogy? That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance that he has. Thank you.